Gospodin Blagoja Mukanovi iz firme Akfutura predstavit će iskustva rada u okviru precizne poljoprivrede i savjetodavnih usluga zasnovanih na podacima iz Severne Makedonije. Gospodin Mukanovi ima 18-godišnje praktično iskustvo u oblasti primenjene ekonomije u poljoprivredi sa fokusom na digitalne tehnologije. Izvolite. I will talk on uh, English because I think if I talk on Serbian, it will be <laughs> very messy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. Okay, so uh, my name is Blago Mukanov and uh, I'm the establisher and the owner of AG Futura Technologies. Uh, our core business is in the area of uh, remote sensing applied in um, agricultural advisory and uh, basically our our brand is uh, developed uh, as a result of a couple of other brands which are our partner companies uh, one very big uh, university actually, actually is a center of excellence and uh, one more uh, very interesting uh, company that is in the area of uh, remote sensing uh, that those are our colleagues uh, agrisat from uh, from spain just very shortly about us, uh, we were established uh, 2016. Our main area of operations are uh, digital agriculture and precision agriculture, whereas we sell a lot of services, consulting services in the area of uh, agribusiness development. Uh, currently, we employ 12 core employees, but we have 10 uh, other experts that are on our project work. So total, we are 22 people. We have our own privately uh, digitally based advisory system, something similar that Biosense is doing, but agree with, we have a bit different business model. I will explain you a little bit that about that, what is our difference, how we diversify. And uh, we have one of the largest uh, digital infrastructure in uh, North Macedonia that helps us to get better information uh, in order to provide our services. Yeah, uh, just uh, three, six main areas of operations, that is project development, agronomy, digital technologies, uh, agri-food policy, rural development, economics, and uh, basically these are competencies that we combine in order to do what we do. Uh, yeah, currently we, we get our juice mainly from uh, European projects, uh, uh, we are still very young, uh, trying to jump into TLR9 of our development of our projects. So we are commercial, but we are far from sustainability. Our revenue comes around 15% from our commercial services, where is 80, 85% we, we are financed by donors. Oh, sorry. Uh, and uh, these are some of our our big family that is all around the world. People that are working with us, we are acquiring their knowledge. We share their knowledge with them. So, so we are pretty uh, Europeanly based, and we are suffering a bit on the Balkans. Okay, so I always start with uh, a little bit more enthusiastic presentation. I'm I'm coming also from the academia, so I want to discuss a little bit about what is happening. Uh, I don't want to be too abstract, so I want to provoke you a little bit how I perceive what is happening on the Balkans, what is happening in the industry. I hope that I will attract your attention and because uh, it's, um, I have a feeling like we, we want to show very good stories, but the real situation is a bit different, okay? And I always defend a little bit the farmer's position because I still think as an industry, as a digital industry, we don't understand them that much. And the reason why we don't understand the farmers is that we have marginalized them for a very long time. You know, transition came, uh, a lot of other industries were of a big interest, you know, we marginalized them agriculture and now we are paying the bill. And every uh, each stakeholder is paying the bill. Uh, the academia is way behind the, the real sector, you know, uh, the banking sector is way behind. I don't want to talk about the government. And uh, so, so we are in a very messy situation. And basically there are uh, four uh, main forces that are putting a lot of pressure on the farmer. And uh, I think that the uh, technological 
providers that can really understand these are forces can really make a difference on the on the market. I still don't believe that uh, there is a technological provider, not only on the Balkan region, you will see later also on the global level, uh, that, that really makes a change uh, based on digital technologies. Yes, there is some significant progress in precision agriculture as a, as a result of the brands like AG Leader, Pesel, and stuff like that. But, you know, significant change, especially in this eastern part of Europe, you know, I, I, I don't see it still. I don't see it like, like a trend. And you will see what are the stats uh, saying it. Uh, what we want to know, I will emphasize just a couple of things that are worrying me a lot and that can really cause a huge problem in the in the next couple of uh, uh, years. And uh, so it, it's coming very fast. And that is that uh, the, the market is changing. We don't understand that is, uh, the food market is globalizing. And, uh, and the same thing is happening here in the Balkan region. So everybody is mentioning about increasing of the population. Yeah, but that's only one dimension of the story. I think that there are more complex things that are happening in the industry that we don't understand and it is dictating the uh, the the how how technological providers who uh, should position themselves on the on the market so uh, consumers are are starting to become very uh, demanding and uh, they are very sophisticated in their tastes and uh, the farming business uh, is suffering a lot in order to keep it up with this with, with this trend climate change is uh, but not the climate change like the one that is exposing. It's really something happening on the side of the climate change. Uh, participation is uh, significantly decreased. You know, watering is becoming a huge problem. We don't pay attention about how we manage our water. You will see later we are paying a lot of attention in our services on how to manage water. On the, on the input side, I would say one of the biggest problem, and I will tell you as the technological providers, what are we facing with is with new agronomists. And the, this, is a, this is a labor market that is suffering a lot. I think that the huge problem is that the academia has, uh, has a huge problem over there to keep up with the, with the new trends. They're suffering a lot with finance that don't have, I don't understand that. But uh, I think that uh, they are lacking, especially on the Balkan region, the academia is lacking huge behind of what is happening. And they cannot answer on the market to really produce good agronomies that can really work for companies. It takes me around six months to find a good agronomist. I employ full-time four, four agronomists, uh, but there are more than 10 agronomists that are working all the time. Uh, for me, and I'm I'm really suffering to find a really really good agronomist that can that can really respond to our needs and solve big problems. Huh? Um, the government, uh, what can I say about government? I'm always criticizing, but they they're way behind. I'm happy to see what this biosense doing with the government. I hope that uh, they're responding a lot. Unfortunately, in our country, it's a bit different. And there is an institutional you know, problem that is happening that cannot absorb new ideas and it is replicating on the, on the industry and we are suffering. Uh, what, what, what to say uh, on the government side, what I see and why we have entered the advisory service is that um, something that I think is also happening in Serbia, I see that in also in Croatia, Slovenia is a bit different, is that the, the advisory services is very poor. So we have marginalized and we have kind of uh, really put on the side the extension agency. It doesn't matter in what kind of a model we are providing it and what kind of a model we have. We have very similar model, the ex Yugoslavian countries. We all have similar model extension agency. But over here, I see it a very big problem is that the academia still don't have enough juice in order to really make a, make a difference. So there is no the system that is really functioning uh, structurally to really solve problems. Uh, one more graph that I always try to, to show it is that we don't understand uh, basically where is the agricultural sector in the moment, where is the agricultural sector, and we as a technological providers, where, where are we in the moment? So the, 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 the agricultural industry is somewhere between, uh, between growth and maturity. It's all the time jumping. It goes to maturity, but something new will come and we go to growth. 
Whereas we as an industry, as digital industry, we are in the very early stages of growth. We finished the infant stage and now we're in growth stage. And what is characteristic about these two stages, I work a lot on this in the science part, is that it's messy. Everybody's uh, trying to sell something that is not precise and uh, precise vision where the industry goes. And just to give you an analog idea about uh, what uh, this industry looks like with uh, something previously very similar, it was very similar when the uh, in the early 2000, when when there is a, was a huge boom on the market with the websites, with this IT industry, and everybody was selling something. But what happened is the the bubble increased and it blow up. And I think that uh, something similar is happening now in the digital industry. Uh, everything is uh, everything is provided. There is a lot of uh, uh, solutions that are very specific, selling specific uh, problems. But uh, farmer doesn't want to have hundreds uh, applications on their website, on their computer, on their mobile phones. They want to have a one simple solution that gives them a right direction. And most of the time, we still don't understand that farmers want to spend time on the field to be with their plants, with their animals. Usually what I see on the market is some complex solutions that there is a lot of demanding of entering data analysis farmer will not uh, anal analyze an ndvi uh, picture you know it's it's too complicated for him you know it's he doesn't want to spend a lot of money on the computer or the, a lot of time on the computer what he needs is a good advice somebody to lead him and as a matter of fact that's how we are building our philosophy and our business model just to give you a little bit what is happening, this is from my, my, my very good uh, colleague, Mr. Brini. He's a professor and uh, part-time professor at the ETH uh, faculty at uh, Switzerland, uh, very strong faculty in the area of precision agriculture. And this is, this is what is happening in the moment on, on the global industry, huh? is that uh, uh, digital agriculture is divided in four main groups of products. Uh, one that is connected with uh, decision support, something that we do, something what Agrivi is doing it. Uh, farm management system, ERP, uh, which is suffering a lot because it's very complex. Uh, data collection industry, these are all these IOTs, interesting gadgets that you see. And data-driven equipment, input adjustment, you will see later. This is um, more something that is installed on current machinery, you know, that generates data, then we use it afterward to make uh, good decisions. And as you can see, the, the highest adoption of this IT solution is 35% is globally. On the Balkan market, it's a way different situation. And um, what, I'm, what I'm saying, it still takes a lot of time. Trend is absent. It's, it's uh, for me, it's still very accidental cases. And uh, it, it will take some time to, to enter really the industry. Uh, yeah, who we are. So our business model is uh, basically selling advisory services uh, based on remote sensing. We don't do the business model like Agrivi. What we do is uh, something similar like an ach ar architectural design studio. So we use the latest uh, gadgets uh, in order to help our agronomists to sell better advisory services to our, to our clients. So we don't sell software, we don't sell, we sell just services. We use, we see what is top notch in the moment, what can help us uh, to better analyze the data and we sell services. We don't, we don't go into software, we don't go into selling IOTs. We have a very, a very simple conservative advisory model because we saw that the gap is basically that the extension agency is not functioning. So what are we trying is we're selling individual modules or services to our clients. So we don't complicate and, and, and we, don't, we go in this side. So um, uh, we use three layers of data. Uh, we use satellite data, uh, we use drone data and we use uh, lo uh, ground data. Uh, we have a network of uh, different IOTs depending on where is our clients. We installed uh, different type of sensors that are giving us, depending on the package that the client will sell, uh, will buy, 
uh, we combine different uh, IOTs that will give us a bit uh, better uh, understanding of the of the situation, and we combine these in we call them crop models, disease models, depending of of uh, what what is the service in order to give a better advice. Uh, what is a bit different uh, us than the other companies, at least what I see, is that we design our own crop models and our own disease models. Why we say we design it is there are universal models, crop models, disease models that exist, you can buy it, but uh, it's how to calibrate these models on the local geoclimatical conditions. And it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of calibration, and it takes a lot of patience from both sides, from we as providers and our clients. Yeah, we, we, we combine three models of services in one concrete uh, process of selling services, which is called Teramas. And that's actually remote advisory and monitoring system which is a bundle of processes of services that is very similar when you uh, implement SAP as an ERP system. You know SAP, it's an ERP system. So, so uh, it's, what we sell is a way of how you need to do the farming. And we use IoTs and software as our tools. That's it. Yeah, we do planning. We spend a lot of time on farm economy is uh, we try to understand to which extent the technology is consistent with the farm economy. Where are the gaps? So we put a lot of attention on applied economics of agriculture. We are not software engineers. We basically are a team of smart people, some in agriculture, some in agronomy, some in technology. We combine them to, combine them to solve specific solutions, specific problems. Every client is different. We, we work, uh, you know, for two to three years in order to calibrate their, uh, calibrate their model and to really come up with some kind of optimization that decreases the, uh, the, the, the cost from 15 to 20 percent. So it's a long term process and it takes a lot of money and patience in order to come up with a good solution. We start with uh, soil analysis. We are, have a specific uh, strategic uh, partnership with uh, two labs, uh, one in, in Budapest and one in Macedonia. These are accredited, certificate, uh, certified uh, uh, labs that can really answer our needs because we don't uh, spend attention only on macro elements and doing our zoning on macro elements. We pay attention a lot on micro elements, how we combine micro elements, because if you really want to adapt the crops, to the specific geoclimatical conditions and especially to the to the soil, uh, there is a lot of philosophy. There is a lot of strategy in micro elements, and we pay a lot of attention on how to combine. Well, actually, how much? Are around 16 elements that are crucial really, really to make a good crop model and to really design our our planting uh, and our our nutrition programs. Yeah, uh, so productivity analysis, uh, it takes a lot of time. I will go right away to the other slide. So what are we known about is uh, we know how to go to the past a lot. We go almost 10 years in the past. Uh, this is a model of four years. What are we trying to do is first, uh, we try to understand how certain location has been behaving before we came. And uh, there are two satellites that are really providing this data. Uh, everybody can buy the data. Everybody can, can, can really get this data. So I don't want to, 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 to tell you that I'm somehow smart, especially smart. What are we smart in is how we read the data, how we analyze the data, and how, how we actually combine our data in, in the consultancy. And this is a very good example. It's in, uh, it's in Macedonia and an example of uh, four year, uh, the, it's a four year past analysis of uh, four different uh, crops. And what are we trying to do is to find the best average based on, win on which we can start to design our zoning and to really set up some baseline and to understand uh, where we need to start in order to really calibrate it for the, for the future. And uh, we end up with uh, zones, 
these are precision agriculture zones. Uh, the, the picture that you see over there is with three zones. And we have also a map with uh, 14 zones. Depending on the client and what kind of uh, equipment it has, uh, we combine different zoning maps. Uh, and depending on what kind of a strategy uh, the client wants to apply. There are two general strategies in, a pl in plant nutrition and in zoning. One is to acquire the best yield with the current uh, application of, of uh, fertilizers. The other strategy is uh, how to uh, get the, the best uh, yields with optimal usage of, of, uh, of the, of the uh, fertilizers. Yeah, uh, so I, I don't want to, this is how one management zone looks like. Uh, one problem that we are facing a lot, I don't know how it is in, in Serbia, is, uh, I apologize, just for the organizer. It was 20 minutes, but it showed in the agenda 30 minutes. So do I still have the 30 minutes or? I want to, okay, okay. So uh, what are we suffering in the zoning and implementing zones? And we've been uh, doing a lot of guerrilla approaches is unfortunately, uh, especially in, North Mac in Macedonia, the spreaders of fertilizers are not automated and we are suffering a lot. We are buying a lot of additional uh, equipment in order to make these spreaders of fertilizers be a, be a bit smarter uh, to really apply this kind of zones. That is why most of our maps in, in Macedonia are three zone maps. Uh, because, you know, going to 12 zone maps, it's very complicated. You need to have these smart spreaders that um, really can apply that precise plant nutrition program. And um, by saying that, uh, do we need, can we really reduce the, 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 fertil the fertilizer application to 15 to 20 percent? Uh, you know, when I was starting the business, for me, it was uh, too much. But now, considering the average of application of uh, fertilizers, especially in Macedonia, I think that we can go in more than 20%. Okay, uh, yeah, we do crop uh, health modeling. This is how it looks like. This is also a case in, in Macedonia. Is, uh, this is early det uh, detection of uh, steam rust uh, uh, that uh, we, we really can detect it very fast. And what is, Basically, our advantage is that based on our disease models and and uh, the the drone data that we get, this is a uh, uh, this is a no, this is a satellite. Sorry, uh, we can we can go on very early detection, uh, and this precise example is uh, is uh, for steam rust, and this is a picture that we communicate a lot our our application that we have that we have developed by ourselves. Uh, we right away what we ask when we have an uh, indication that something is happening, we know exactly where the agronomy is to be sent. We give them exact GPS location. He uses or she uses her mobile device. He knows where exactly to come and right away send us uh, pictures on the field. We try to reduce our field visits because that's the highest cost element in our services. And we try to be together as we work as a team with the client, especially with the, with the uh, agronomists uh, in, in the, you know, at the clients that we work for. Yeah, this is a typical report, uh, weekly report uh, that we send uh, to our clients. Uh, it's, uh, we don't use something uh, sophisticated, some software application. What we do is basically through our very simple app, we sent um, a report where uh, they know exactly where to go, which hotspot, and what uh, they need in the report. It says exactly what they need to take as an information in order to on us to know uh, what should be our advice and the next step. This is a very specific, um, uh, very specific um, um, uh, solution that uh, we uh, provided for a big winery. They had a problem to identify death uh, plants. Uh, why? Because uh, when they were spreading pesticides, there were some blocks where there is a lot of death, death plants. And what they were requesting for ourselves, uh, from, our, from uh, our company, was to create a specific model where the, the sprayer can be turned off 
uh, when it will come to a zone of uh, dead uh, plants. And uh, what we do, the, what we did uh, is basically we were able, based on drone images, to calculate which are those zones, and everywhere where there was a, uh, where there was a, a gap of uh, more than three plants. So there were there were uh, areas where there are ten plants in a row that are dead. We we created our own our own model that uh, later on uh, needed to needed to be uh, installed on uh, their smart uh, spreader and their their computer on the in the tractor uh, in order to to turn off this the sprayer when uh, you are appear when you are uh, facing with uh, dead plants so it's a uh, what i'm saying is that we are very customized we are very uh, we approach it uh, client by client we don't have uh, let's say uh, regular processes of how we solve um uh how we solve uh, co precise problem is uh, just day by day problem by problem yeah crop management i talked a lot i want to i want to mention one more product this is a product that is most developed and we sell it not only in macedonia we sell it spain and we sell it also in in uh, in uh, in france uh, something that uh, I think uh, remote sensing technology technologies have proved that has a significant contribution is in irrigation. Um, uh, the, the maps and the data that we get from satellite, uh, there is the only need uh, that we have, especially for open crops and permanent crops, is we need just the satellite data and we pray to God that there is no clouds. So whenever we get a good clean uh, uh, picture, uh, we have enough good algorithms to calculate uh, the amount of uh, the amount of uh, water that needs to be uh, applied. And what we are also very good, we can adapt the maps on each type of uh, irrigation system that is uh, provided. So it doesn't matter if it's a drip irrigation or it is a classical uh, row irrigation. Uh, we have our own system, how to calculate and how much it needs to be applied. And I would tell you, this is a, a very simple product. It looks like a very simple product, but it's a product that is, is a hugely connected with the um, amount of stress of the plant that uh, on the end, it's uh, really, uh, imp uh, it has a huge impact on the quality of the fruits and especially in winery. Uh, it helps us a lot to really calculate the right amount of water for the given level of stress that needs to be achieved in each uh, phenological phase that we we observe. Uh, and it's uh, it, it's a very demanding product, and uh, uh, it's a, it's in, especially on Thursday. I don't know how, to which extent you know in Spain. Uh, uh, the, the Spain uh, really irrigates during the weekend. They have a specific system, uh, subsidy-based system, and uh, it's a very complex system. And especially on Sundays, they it's it's uh, it's it's like um, drug addicts. You know, they are all the time pressuring us to really produce these maps uh, because it really helps them to really apply the right amount of data to spend the right amount of electricity to apply it in a, in a given in a given phenological phase. What's the difference between the team, two, two maps? This is the only product that we do. It's just this map. Send it to either to mobile phone, either to email. So nothing complicated, nothing sophisticated on the mobile phones. Do something crazy, you know. It's just this map. And this is what they need to do. They automate their system of irrigation, and they're very satisfied with the, what they are achieving it. Yeah, in harvesting, we can do it. To be honest, we have done this. Uh, uh, harvesting is a totally different philosophy. We are trying, we hope this year we will get in, in, in the harvesting and remote season in harvesting. This is a lot of calibration uh, in the models that needs to be done. It takes a lot of time and money. I, I hope that we will come up with something good also in the, in the harvesting uh, module. And uh, this is what we end up. We have uh, this specific system, which is called Ramas, and uh, it is consistent of combination of IOTs, uh, drone and, and satellite images. All of this data gets in our server, we and in our algorithms, we analyze them, and uh, through our very simple application, we provide 
uh, a simple advice what the farmer needs to do for for this week uh, the process is very simple uh, you got registered on a platform that you use it that we use it from uh, our client agrisat is very similar what agrivi is doing it but it's more industrial uh, it's more industrial application uh, we we create our hub for each client we analyze the data depending of which which module we are focusing on we give our own reports and something that we are characterized about we do a lot of calibration our service when we sign a contract with the company our service lasts from two years up to three years to come up with a calibrated model that is adapted to a specific geoclimatical position and this is something that is totally different that is on the market in remote sensing. What we do is we adapt, we work, because me personally, I cannot promise a result in one year. It takes a lot of time to adapt these crop models that are developed, some of them are developed in Wageningen, some of them uh, developed in Leon, in, in, at Cornell, but these are universal models, you know, these are not models that are adapted to the, to the, to the to this climate you know and the climate is changing is very diversifying and it takes a lot of time uh nothing special over here i don't want to bother you yeah uh, so this is it for me i hope that i didn't bother you a lot you know i i was trying to do a little bit uh, more freestyle and uh, yeah thank you very much